Hi folks, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to look at the initial and final value theorems. The initial value theorem we don't use a whole lot in control design and analysis, but the final value theorem we use all the time. Let's look at the motivation for this topic. A lot of times we'll have a control system reference that is where we want it to go. Well, let's look at some motivation and goals. A lot of times we'll want a controlled system to go to some reference value and stay there. In this context, we're going to call that reference value and steady state the final value. Armed with these analysis tools of the final value theorem, it lets us bake that concept of getting to some reference value into the actual analysis and design of the control system. There's just two goals, and the first one is to be able to calculate a function's initial and final value using these two theorems. The second one is pretty important, especially for the final value theorem. There are many cases where it just plain old doesn't apply, and so you have to be able to know how to do that sort of check. So here we go. Consider you have some function f of t, and it has the Laplace transform capital F of s. The initial value theorem goes like this. The initial value of that function f of t is just equal to the limit as s goes to infinity of s times f of s. That theorem applies as long as that limit exists. The final value theorem has a very similar look to it. The value of f at infinity, or its final value, is equal to the limit as s goes to zero of s times f of s. But this theorem only applies if the roots of the denominator all have negative real parts. The trick here is that you have to form s times f of s, cancel out all the s's in the numerator and denominator that, that you can possibly cancel, and then check the roots of the denominator of s times f of s. I'm going to work two examples, and after each one, we'll go into MATLAB and have a look at it there. Imagine that there's some function r of t, and what you have is the Laplace transform of it, or capital R of s. And what you have to do is find the value of r0 and r at infinity. So let's do the initial value theorem, and then just plug away. So there is s times r of s. Now if you remember your limits from calculus and you look at a function like this, you can see that you have an s squared in the numerator and an s squared in the denominator. So we need to divide through both numerator and denominator by s squared. And then we can write the initial value theorem in this form. And when you let s go to infinity, a lot of those terms just drop out. And you're just left with 3. So when we plot this function, if we put r of s into MATLAB, and then take the inverse Laplace transform of it to get r of t and we plot it, we should see the initial value of this at 3. Well now let's do the final value theorem. s times r of s is the same as we had in the previous uh, initial value theorem. But at this point, you need to stop and check the roots of the denominator of this s times r of s. So here's the denominator. You can factor it into a very nice form, and you can see that both roots have negative real parts. So the final value theorem applies. You let s go to 0, and you just get 0 for the final value. So let's have a look at this in MATLAB. I'll use a live script so that we can keep track of what we're doing for this example and the next one. We'll just tidy some things up just in case there's any gremlins lurking. And we're going to do this symbolically, so I'll make a couple symbolic variables s and t since we're going to be doing some Laplace transform work. Let's get r into this. I think that's what we had for r. And now let's take the inverse Laplace transform. Probably the easiest way to see the initial and final value is just to plot this thing. So that's what we'll do. How about, ooh, we'll go to 10. 
run it. See if there's any errors. Oh, it came out okay. And there is R of T. We can see, well, it's a little hard to see actually. So let's clean that up. And what I'll do is just do this. And I'll grab the current axes and set the font size to oh, about 16. And we'll replot. There, that's easier to see, easier on everyone's eyes. And certainly we can see the final value going to zero out here and the initial value here at three, which is exactly what we had when we used the two theorems. Beautiful. Here's our second example. Imagine that you're faced with this differential equation. It has some nice initial conditions and an input u of t. And what you have to do is figure out what the final value or the steady state value of this is for a couple different inputs. In case A, the input is a step with amplitude 4, and in case B, it's a ramp. Now you could go ahead and solve this differential equation and then replace t with infinity and see what you get. Or you could convert this thing to the Laplace domain, solve for capital X of S, and apply the final value theorem as long as the final value theorem applies. And of course, we're going to use that approach. So the first thing we do is take the Laplace transform of the differential equations and exploit all those lovely initial conditions. And now for case A, the input u is equal to a step with amplitude 4, and so in the Laplace domain, that's just 4 over s. Solve for x of s. And now apply the final value theorem. Now at this point, we need to pause a little bit. We have to do two things. First, we have to simplify this rational function, this polynomial in the numerator, polynomial in the denominator function. We have to simplify it as much as we can. So here we can cancel a couple s's, and then we have to check the roots of that denominator. This is the denominator of s times f of s. We can use the old quadratic formula and solve for the roots. All we have to find is really the real part of these roots, and they both have to be in the left half plane of the complex plane. Or another way to put that is they have to have negative real parts. And in this case, it certainly does. So we can apply the final value theorem, and we get 4 thirteenths. Now when we plug this into MATLAB, the capital X of S, and take the inverse Laplace transform of it and plot it, we should see that it reaches a steady value, a constant value of 4 thirteenths for a very large time. Now let's do the other input, a ramp. In the Laplace domain, that's just 1 over S squared. We can plug that in for the U in the upper right expression and solve for capital X. Now we need to apply the final value theorem, and at this point you start getting more comfortable with this, and you say, well, you know, I need to look at s times x, and in particular, look at its denominator. So here we're going to stop and check the denominator of s times x of s, and it has three roots. One of them is at zero, and the other two are just like before, they're at negative two plus minus three j. Well, the negative two plus minus three j roots are just fine, but that root at zero, that's no good. Those roots, all of them, have to have negative real parts. So the final value theorem doesn't apply, and we're done. Now this has a slightly deeper meaning in the sense that there is no final value. It reminds me of that movie The Matrix where the little boy said there is no spoon. It's kind of like that. Well, let's have a look at this in MATLAB. Here's where we left off from the first example. And let's see, we have two parts to this example. So I'll make capital X A for the, um, the A part and just put in what we had. And take the inverse Laplace transform of this.
and I guess I'll just cheat. That looks about good. Run the whole thing and see what we get. So here it is. The final value is just a wee bit over 0.3. So let's look at what 4 thirteenths is. Ooh, just a wee bit over 0.3. Hey, where'd that window go? Ah, there it is. Okay. Now let's do the other one. I'll just cheat again. And run the whole thing. Now when I look at this, I see something that's not quite right in what I did here, because in part B, our ramp was just a unit ramp, so it had slope one. So let me redo that. And there we go. So you can see here that this response for part B is just growing without bound. And so it doesn't have a final value. It's not reaching a steady state. So that's it. The initial value theorem and the final value theorem. The main thing that you want to keep track of is that applicability of the final value theorem. You have to form S times F of S and check its denominator. And all of its roots have to have negative real parts. After that, you're good to go. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.